It is January the 26th, 1730 UTC. And that brings us to Wagami Wednesday. Oh, I've got my crew here now. I've got Christine and Hawk both here at the same time. Man, i to be so lucky. Get you guys up here. What's up, DZ? Frequent, frequent Traderverse Alpha Hour participant. How's it going, Hawk? How's your morning been so far? As everybody files in, gets kind of their seat situated, kind of gets that butt groove into their chair. I'll speak for a little bit. So the markets have been down. Everybody's been down. Everybody's slumped shoulders and saying, oh, no, what are we going to do? But if you've been in this long enough, you know, and this goes with crypto markets, stock markets, any markets, you know that markets go up, markets go down. No one's really surprised whenever it goes down if you've been in the game long enough. It's not just going to go up always. And whenever it is down, I think, especially whenever we have a a weekly segment called Wag Me Wednesday, so we're all going to make it Wednesday, the we're all going to make it does not just go away whenever the market goes down. That's not, uh, that's not how we're all going to make it work, right? We're going to actually talk about some of the more bullish news that's around. So sometimes you have to search a little bit harder for bullish news. And everybody today is looking at FOMC to find out what uh, what Powell's going to say. So it's, like, it's like the closest to a king we're going to have is Powell, just every every word out of his mouth, which is uh, what our economic uh, outlook is going to be like. But yeah, so we're all kind of waiting for that to kind of drop. And then we're also just looking at different news. And whenever I'm looking for kind of bullish news amongst a bearish time, I'm looking for a few things. I'm looking for news stories that have to do with adoption that, uh, you know, maybe in the DeFi space, it's being things are being more adopted at a quicker rate or some new technologies that are being created that will be able to help both out the DeFi as well as the stock market space. Any of this news can still be powerful and still be, you know, good news whenever it's even a down cycle in the market. So, yes. We're having down cycles in the market, supply chain issues, all kind of things all around. But there's still good news to be had all around. I am Steve and I go by the Voice of DeFi. You can find me on Twitter at Voice of DeFi. We are here on the Traderverse Alpha Hour. And with me is Christine Barnum. Uh, she is the co-founder of the OTC Club and NFT Extraordinaire. You can see her waving right there. Uh, if you get a chance in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you can find a little tweet button. Tweet out the room. Bring your buddies in here because we're going to have a fun discussion today on uh, the Traderverse account here. Now, if you don't know what Traderverse is, it's a soon-to-be-released uh, uh, media network, but it's so much more than that. It's going to be a financial and market-centered social media network, so that's a little different than your YouTubes and your Twitters or wherever else out there. A little different that it's a little more centered around you know your tradable commodities, your NFTs, your crypto, your stocks, that sort of thing. So definitely it's your people that are going to be part of Traderverse, and that will be released very soon. We'll have a product, we'll have streams, which will allow you to create content or consume content right through Traderverse. And at the same time, um, it will have a, you know, you can co-stream with YouTube as well. So that will be a lot of fun as well. Christine, how are you doing today? You having a, you having a good morning? Um, I would say it's okay. I'm nervous about, um, you know, Powell speaking today because you never know which way the market will go. And I feel like, <laughs> like on the stock market and the crypto market, we're just getting, it's just so volatile everywhere. It's crazy. I can't even, it's hard to know how the market's going to move after Powell speaks today. So, One, um, that's right anxious today a little I, I could tell whenever i asked you and your first thing was oh well, i was like well that's not a ringing endorsement for how good your day is going but i used to be involved more in foreign exchange in forex and man you want to see some markets move whenever that guy speaks or just whenever the the reserve chair speaks uh i mean obviously whenever you're dealing with forex you're dealing directly with the currency which which he oversees and man i mean the guy can 
whatever his words say, and literally it can swing the market both ways within sentences of what he says. You know, he'll say one thing that's kind of bullish or saying, you know, kind of hinting about what he's about to kind of do the unveil as far as interest rates. And, uh, you know, he'll say something and boom, market will absolutely make a clear, defined move of where it's going. But then he'll say something next that kind of washes out. What and then it moves the opposite way. <laughs> it moves the opposite way, right. And It's an hour and a half, right? Yeah, but the, the meat of it comes pretty quickly. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not like, a, you know, Netflix or something where they have the big cliffhanger and they hold it to the end. <laughs> it, right, it right. happens a, a little sooner. But yeah, I used to try to do... Um, crazy forex trading strategies on FOMC day where you'd leave like a uh, an entry point at the high and the low at the previous of the previous day and man his sentences just blow through both <laughs> easy easy so i started just saying i'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of watch the markets and not try to scalp it off what he says it got to be it got to be too difficult for me so uh, i'm sure what time is that is, is it uh, i think it's 1 p.m. my time what time is, uh, is it here happening in an hour and a half 11, 11 p.m. Uh, or 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Wouldn't it be a lot more fun if it was p.m. like you said at first, where we all take up <laughs> yeah. to midnight to uh, find out where the markets were going? That would, uh, that would add a new wrinkle for sure. <laughs> if the, yeah. The stock market was closed and all that. But there is bullish news out there. there this isn't all just uh, let's uh, you know wait in anticipation, which we all are waiting in anticipation. But there is other things to discuss. Did you guys see anything about this uh, DeFi or decentralized uh, messaging that may be coming to us? Or, or do you even care whether your messaging is decentralized or centralized? I did see it. My concern was, I think um, Dre, uh, we were speaking about it as well in the chat. Um, I think it's weird. Like, I don't know if I'd want all my messages on the blockchain. And I already have issues with, you know, Twitter and everyone having, like, you know, kind of storing your data. Um, and they say they don't, and then it's archived somewhere or whatever. But I don't know if I trust my all my messaging going through the blockchain, and then with all like these hackers and everything. I don't know. I don't know. Dre, were you going to add to that? Yeah, I was going to. Sorry, I was trying to uh, also message my boy to come in here, my guy from yesterday, Jerry. Um, yep. But no, yeah, when it comes to the messages on the blockchain, I'm not too comfortable with it yet. Uh, I mean, me and my friend Mason or Maha, we always talk about it as like, man, it would be so nice if OpenSea did have a messenger so you could literally message directly to somebody who's holding like an NFT that you want. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking maybe that's what like, you know, they're trying to do with this. But and if that's the case, then, you know, that's that's great because transaction conversations can be recorded, I guess, on the blockchain. So yeah, that way. that's true. You know, there's some uh, evidence behind what people say. You know, they can't say, oh, this person jit me or whatever. You know, the, those messages are all there. But as far as like just a pure messenger, uh, I think I would wait on that one. Yeah, which is what people are doing, right? Like people are screenshotting it. And then they were like, look at I'm messaging people like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. And it was like just regular conversations like, hey, what's up? Like, what are you going to do today? I'm like that's well, so dumb. <laughs> it's cool to them just because it is on the blockchain, which, okay, I, I can. I'm sure the first time like a phone call ever occurred, it was like the novelty of it was cool, right? And and I don't know if any information was actually uh, said that was cool. And so maybe that's what is cool at first. I can say right now, if I'm gonna message one of you guys and it's just so up, you know, yeah, so up things I'm probably just using your my standard centralized messaging for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It kind of reminds me like don't the tell me days. secrets on this thing. Yeah, <laughs> that can get people in trouble, right? If it's, everything is, is is publicly viewable. Well, I hope that people are smart enough to not go that route, you know. But also, yeah, you have to be careful which information you you share on there for sure. Because if people can figure out how to tap into those messages, oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, things could get hairy real quickly. Well, okay, so I think everybody wants to be decentralized. It'd be really cool if whenever I went to OpenSea, it had nothing to do with Amazon Web Servers. I was able to do messaging that's completely decentralized. It's not held anywhere. So that's cool. My question about messaging, and it sounds like y'all have already talked about it, so maybe you or y'all have already at least talked about it offline. How are they, what blockchain it's going to be on, and how are they paying transactional costs of it? You know, what if I'm, you know those people that put like one thought into like 17 messages? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's going to happen there? 
I'm actually not sure how that is going to go. I was looking into that actually too, because I was like, is this going to, you know, cost gas for this messenger? Is each message going to cost something, you know, or is it because I know it's the owners of Etherscan that made this platform. So I don't, I'm guessing is maybe they would make it on ETH, but who, <laughs> you know, on the ETH blockchain. But if they did, then yeah, wouldn't there be transaction fees and all that kind of stuff? So I, I'm pretty interested in, in seeing the background of that also. So it's late at night. You're ready to send out your booty call message with the you, know, <laughs> you up, and it costs you 150 dollars US dollars in ETH to be able to send that you up. So and you get left on red. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, that, that's an expense of Netflix and chill movie. You know, yeah, for real, yeah, exactly. real expensive. Yeah, you better, yeah. That's you know how uh, you know you take the girl on the date and you're like, I paid all this money and everything. Come on. Well, now it's like, I paid all these gas fees. Okay. I just sent a, a you up text. Uh, you mm -hmm. at least could respond to me. Uh, but she doesn't want to spend the $150 to respond to you either. So, uh, yeah, she, she's just not that into you enough to be able to, uh, spend gas money on you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, to everything y'all are saying, I completely agree. Now, if you saw this, this, uh, XX Messenger, which I don't think is the same guy that uh, is putting on the Etherscan one. He says it's quantum resistant, so even quantum computing couldn't hack into it. So I know at least people are thinking about the hacking aspect of it, of having access to everything. I don't think, I mean, I'm sure all the messages would be encrypted. It's not to where you would be able to read my you up message um, to, to somebody else. So yeah, who knows? I think it's a good thing to think about. And Christine's obviously thinking already about um, you know, security and all your messages being out there and everything like that. So um, either way, as far as it being, you know, a positive thing, yeah, it's good that they're trying to do something that's on Web 2 into Web 3. Wow. Now, what I'm wondering is how far do they go with this? Do you turn this into an actual messenger app, you know, like they people could use on their phones to to message kind of like a WhatsApp type feel where, you know, if it is encrypted and, and you know, unhackable, you know, then some some, you know, really weird conversations will be held on those things. Yeah, but what happens to the person that you send that message to, right? I mean, they do they have access? They obviously have access to that message. Are they the only one? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like, if it maybe if it's like a direct messenger, like like you know WhatsApp. WhatsApp's supposed to end encrypted, so you know, technically, you would think that only you two would be accessible to those information. But then, of course, it's all been proven that you know WhatsApp isn't as secure as we all think. So you know, I feel like it's going to be the same thing with with this. You know, somebody will figure out the, the loophole of these. Some of these guys live for that. But like that OpenSea example you had, is it be cool to be on OpenSea and, uh, you know, maybe message somebody that's holding an NFT and ask them a question about it? That would be cool. But do you do you feel like that has to be decentralized or do you feel like OpenSea could have some servers and just just? Yeah, I feel like they could just have some servers and literally just have a messenger app right. like in there. It doesn't have to be all all it doesn't extreme. have to be on the blockchain. Yeah, you know. I mean, there is some security that would probably be need to held in be held in it cuz I feel like some phishing type links or things like that could be sent through those messengers and possibly hack people's wallets, which is one thing I would be, you know, uh kind of hesitant on also is just, you know, maybe a direct link through OpenSea could be um it could have goods and bads. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of like, let's say, I'm thinking almost like a group chat on OpenSea where there's a separate group chat for every individual NFT. And that way you could ask a question and uh, maybe it could yeah. be edited as the owner is answering, the, the the current owner of the NFT is answering the question there. Uh, it yeah. could be for some cool discussion. I don't know that it needs to be on the blockchain. Yeah, exactly. It would be like, um, what's that app where you can sell things off up where you could just message the owner? Yeah, That'd be cool. An offer up for NFTs. Oh man. Yeah, I mean it's pretty similar, right? Like, like similar, similar feeling. Um, but yeah, it doesn't. I feel like if they were gonna create this messaging um, on the blockchain, whatever they're trying to do, decentralized, it really isn't needed. Um, and I could only see um, use for what Dre was saying, which is um, transactional messaging through all these NFT platforms or maybe even crypto exchanges, whatever, but does it need to be decentralized? Probably not. Cause you're not really going to be having some crazy um, in-depth conversations there or which you shouldn't. And I think we're still very early in the space where we're seeing so much hacking going on and um, you know, phishing links and this and that. I just feel like it opens another loophole for someone to attack um, a lot of investors. 
But there's some people that want this, I think. And, and it's because, okay, so you heard me yesterday talking about like, oh, if you, uh, if you use the PFP feature on Twitter, then you're kind of opening up your wallet to everybody. And Scroop came on here and said, uh, you know, that's not really necessary. No one cares. And he's probably right. Okay. First of all. But second of all comes, you do have a group of that just want to be anonymous uh, online. And so if they think they can do a messaging app where you're just messaging, you know, voice of DeFi rather than Steven, uh, you know, it, it makes it to where they can at least have a messaging app and be as anonymous as they always wanted to be. Um, and I'm sending something to Christine Barnum ETH, a message to that address. Now, granted, that's a bad example since it's a very, it's not an anonymous uh, uh you know, address, but yeah, it makes it to where we can message and still be anonymous. And maybe, maybe that group of people that really want to live like that, that's what this app is probably made for. Like, uh, what was Mark Cuban? Didn't Mark Cuban have an app that was, uh, cyber dust or something like that, where it just went away eventually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that person wants to remain anonymous, obviously. So, so the app is going to be iOS and Android compatible. How do you think, uh, you know, does it truly stay decentralized? If it's on your iPhone, ooh, that's a good question. And it does because Apple is notorious for not letting people play in their sandbox. Does, does it, yeah, does Apple allow it to to stay on their App Store without you know sideloading it? And then also, if you think about it too, like okay, yeah, these guys want to be anonymous, like that one wallet that holds what is it over like five hundred million dollars worth of of NFTs. Think about the messages this guy would have. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I'd pay to see it. <laughs> you know, like, he, he, if, if, let's go thousands upon thousands of, of NFTs. So now you're thinking of every single message of a person who wants to buy one of those. And then not also that, then the spammers, the people who will try to spam and, and get into his wallet or send some weird link or mint, mint my project or da 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 and then you also would have the people who would just message to try to figure out who that is. <laughs> I mean, I was talking, you'd be thinking of thousands upon thousands of messages. So I think for those guys, they probably wouldn't be there in their best interest. But I feel like the average person like us who's just trying to, you know, flip NFTs, get our hands on certain ones, like Bunny, uh, the Bunny last night was saying that he was trying to reach out to the OX Apes guy that has his ape but the guy wasn't responding to him. I mean, that would be great to have a messenger, you know, hey, I like, you know, this is my actual board ape, you know, I want to buy it from you. Then, you know, and, and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with those OX apes because I don't Me understand too. how they're still even on the market. Me too. I don't understand why people are buying them, but um, we have somebody in here, I think, that has it. Because my thing is, like, we have a lot of board ape friends, right? And then they're obviously not super into you know the idea. It? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. for me, I was like, okay, w w what did they actually do? They just changed the background color to yellow. But yeah. it's the exact same art. So I, the, to me, I'm like, I, of all the projects that have been removed from Punk's powers and, you know, uh, and Doodles getting people removed and, and things right. like that, like the I was very surprised that Board Apes wasn't able to keep these guys off the market. Yeah, it's hardly I, derivative if it's just a background color. Change. Right. I invited yeah. um, Crypto T14 up if you want to come up because I see that you have one. And we want to, you know, kind of get your mind of um, what you think about these OX ones. And they're moving, right? Their floor is moving. Yeah, because I was going to buy one last night. They were like 0 0.39, 0 0.4. And I was looking at them and I was like, I don't know. I wonder how much more they're going to go up. And then this morning they're like 0. 0.5, 6, 0. 0.57, I think it was. I think so it's it was at like 0. A, 0.8. Is it at 0.8 already? I think so. Wow, I should have bought it. I just <laughs> didn't know because I'm. that's why I'm like asking everybody. I'm like, what is your guys' thoughts on this? And I should have known the board ape guys would have been like, you know, eh, boo. You know, they all had their own response. They didn't like it. But I'm just thinking of it in a flip aspect. You know, I could have bought one last night and just flipped it this morning. Or, you know, I, and I probably should have just done it. But. I was feeling hesitant because I'm like, dude, I've already like did one of these jacks and they got removed, you know, a couple yeah. more, a couple of days later, and then I'm stuck with it, and I don't want to be stuck in that. Stuck. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a big investment to get stuck. Zero point um, five five, and oh no, they, and, they're, um, okay. and I guess the case that they've made for them is that they're fundamentally different from the apes, and this is like, I guess about three thousand five hundred people who are disappointed with the way that the BAYC people have portrayed their ownership of of those original apes on twitter and how they've treated people so they've they've got delisted briefly from OpenSea, and they're back mm -hmm. they're back and they're popular so like if that upsets people that's 
BY, the BAYCs are just buying them up. That's the they're buying part. them also because they like them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have one. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't want people to also have their ape, you know. Luke, you have one? Yeah, I got it at 0.05 six days ago, seven days ago. Nice. Wow. So you don't feel like they'll get delisted because a lot of the derivative projects that are a lot more different, right, than the um, original project. They get yeah. tossed out well, and then people get stuck. With yeah, them. if they get delisted, I'm okay with it because I was on a space with them yesterday and they're building their own marketplace. And I believe that they're using the code that was made to build for punks. not Larva Labs for funks. And um, I'm yeah. in favor of it because OpenSea's done nothing for a lot of people. And like they're, 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 they are not a decentralized marketplace. They're not issuing a token. I, I'm in favor of uh, marketplaces like Looks Rare that are supporting and giving back to the community. I think there's going to yeah. be a big movement away from OpenSea, and it's in progress right now. Um, yeah. They already were delisted, and then they were relisted. Um, I don't, I don't, I question the fact whether or not the original DMCA for the crypto funks was ever exi really existed because that was like coincided with the same time that Nate Chastain was ru front running collections on anybody who's ever bought anything off of OpenSea. Right, right. So I think that, like, I think these things are all happening in reaction to other people's actions. These are reactions. Now, do you think if they get big enough? Right. Like say they have a eventually like they, they do really well and they get up to a couple ETH floor. Will BAYC eventually go after them for, you know, copyright infringement or whatever it may be? I mean, I think that would be the best thing that could ever happen to the OX apes because I don't think that they could really uh, win. Um, that's okay. just, that's my, you know, that's a very brief answer, but I, I, I would, I wouldn't mind if they did that right now. I think it would bring more attention to that OX apes collection than anything else ever could. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the only thing I was thinking is, okay, if they do get, you know, obviously taken down, I figured they'd go the route of making their own marketplace or, you know, maybe listing on a different marketplace. And then, so, you know, I just haven't had much success myself with projects who have done that and tried to move to a different, they kind of just, you know, fell off or disappeared. I mean, the the only ones I can think of are the funks who who did the yeah. opposite of falling off and disappeared. They went up like a hundred times in value. And uh, I know that the OX apes are in the pro process of building a marketplace right now. Okay, that's cool. Well, that's well if, they, they, have if the they don't have a marketplace, you know, Traderverse will have a marketplace. So if <laughs> that connection tell them to come on over, we're happy to, uh, you know, be that facilitated for them. Yeah, I'm sure they will. You... I mean, they're on, they're on looks rare, they're on rareable. And so OpenSea is not the only game in town. And I think that that's an important message for people to remember. It's like when you buy stuff there, like, for example, when the Funks opened their own marketplace in the first like couple of weeks, there was like almost two and a half million dollars that didn't go to that 2.5 percent royalty fee that OpenSea takes and if you look at the numbers that they're doing did mooks just get rugged i think so i think so well on you know talking about the traderverse having a marketplace which granted that'll be awesome to be able to have everything right in one place OpenSea is in my mind OpenSea is not going to keep its dominance forever now you may you guys may disagree with me there i 100 percent agree with it <laughs> in what way do you think so okay so we both agree that they're not going to keep their dominance but do you think there will be a different different king or do you think it will be just a lot of princes just uh several different places where you could you know do the same thing i think with what crypto.com is doing and coinbase is they will either be also like dual kings or you know they will share the limelight i just think it's there's a matter of time before that that open sea throne gets gets you know taken away because i mean if you really look at it like you know he made some really good points they're they're not decentralized they don't have a token they're not giving back they're not upgrading their servers they're not i still have a support ticket of a month and i can't sell some nfts because my account's frozen i'm very i'm waiting that's crazy I go on, man that's crazy. yeah you know i go on looks rare and I, I just can't vibe with it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it's still an alternative, you know, and I would love to move to looks rare, you know, but it's just kind of like, uh, I do, it's not my feel yet. I don't think that's the new king if I put it, you know, in the best terms. Yeah, I, I get that. And and to me, that's the way I think. I just think they are first to market, or not first to market open C is, but they're they're definitely the dominant in the market right now. But I don't believe they're going to stay dominant. Now, can they? Yeah, I guess they can continue to try to make the right moves and 
for the most part, they've made good moves, but I'm seeing some writing on the wall that kind of shows that uh, the other players in the market, for instance, uh, Meta is looking to integrate NFTs much like Twitter has done with their uh, hexagon logos, but they want to actually, Meta wants to actually make a marketplace as well. That gets into the wag me kind of discussion too, and that that's going to bring NFTs with the Facebook crowd yeah. to a group that they are not familiar with NFTs in the least bit. And Facebook would, or Meta would probably make it pretty easy for onboarding too. I definitely agree. I think the only thing with Meta, I mean, how many people still use Facebook? <laughs> Well, That's not, the only thing I'm thinking is really realistically, I haven't opened my Facebook and I don't know how long. I would probably say maybe over a year or two, I mean, even before COVID and I was dead bored during COVID. I still never went on Facebook. I can um, agree with that. With the, the NFT crowd, the people that are going to be in this space, I bet you most of them are just like you. Don't even deal with Facebook anymore. But that's what my point is, is that the people that are still using it are probably 50 plus, yep, right? Yep. And, um, 50 plus is not dealing in NFTs right now. They don't even know what a board ape is. No. Nope. Uh, and so for them to introduce to them, I don't know what kind of NFTs the the, the boomers would like, uh, you know, Beatles centered. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know what, what they would like. But point is, I, I still think they might, they could get into the space and it would take a Facebook to do it. I think what we need to look at is just places that have groups that aren't involved in NFTs. We were talking about Paris Hilton on Fallon yesterday great group that isn't involved in nfts because yep. our circle is going to grow in the next few years and so it, it it's not always going to be in one place in one social network i don't think yeah and i think that's what is making the adaptation of the normal world to getting into nfts so hard is because oh yeah great we have it all in one place but to get into that world download MetaMask and, you know, sign up, make an account with OpenSea, and then you have to pay the gap. You know, it definitely becomes a whole process. And when you try to explain that to somebody, it makes it very hard. Whereas, oh, yeah, look at these NFTs on Facebook or Instagram, and you can just literally click buy now and connect your wallet and then buy those things. That would be the mass adaptation that I think we're going to need to for the NFT world to really start being used in the masses. For sure, for sure. Grand Bazaar, you had your hand up for a second. Uh, you put it back down, but if, you, if you've got something to say, I'd love to hear you. Yeah, and I apologize for using this account, but uh, it's me, Butter Toast. I don't, not that anybody knows who I am, but I um, apologize for using my project's account, but Twitter Spaces is not working for my other account. But I love this conversation. I just wanted to add, um, you know, nobody is using Facebook, I think, in, in my age group, at least in like their 30s. But um, I think at least for the NFT crowd, it could be, you know, the whole meta marketplace could be like a catalyst for all of us to go. Like, I've never used Twitter. And then I got into NFTs and then Twitter became a must, you know. Exactly. Uh, so yeah. Hopping back into meta is, is totally plausible. Uh, and it might, you know, be that catalyst if, if they produce a marketplace that reduces those boundaries of like, you know, OK, just mentioned with uh, with downloading a wallet. I think that is something that people will never be able to get past. And so. You know, Coinbase announcing like a USD integration with MasterCard is huge. I think Coinbase is the biggest threat to OpenSea, the most immediate threat. You but don't think it's, it's Crypto.com? No, I think I crypto, think it's Coinbase also. Yeah, really? Yeah, I think Crypto.com yeah. because they've like the quality of NFTs they release, and I think they're on the Kronos network. They've almost established themselves as like a lower tier uh, marketplace. I'd say like a third place or something. So it would go like, you know, uh, OpenSea. Even my parents use Coinbase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, they they do have the they do provide the option to purchase NFTs in USD, which is huge. And not, I'm not hating on Crypto.com. I like I like them and everything they're doing. The fact that they've onboarded so many people, I really appreciate. You know what they've done for the space, and I hope they do well. But I just think at this point, they do need to make some changes as far as like projects that they're releasing. Because yeah, for sure, like those lions. <laughs> yeah, like not not to hate on them or anything, but like. Come on, dude. You're Crypto.com. You done like a hate beast or like a mecha or something. Yes. Yeah, we I went on to Crypto.com's about... platform and I was not impressed by the yeah. projects. We, I think our joke was like, so they didn't spend any money on the artwork here. Because yeah. they have so much freaking... Their budget is huge, obviously. And we're like so disappointed on the projects that they decided to come out with it was really a missed opportunity and so I, yeah. I, I can opportunity. barely even draw a stick figure and i think I could have <laughs> that, um, well, that was the thing too i noticed is that they brought in these names oh this artist and this and such and such artist but then i was like okay but have they really made like a good nft project you know they kind of just have their 
their artwork, which their artwork is, you know, good. And there's all different types of people who like different types of art. <laughs> But if you're trying to appeal to this community and take Open Seas community, you know, away, you got to kind of go after what we're looking for, you know, in a sense, you know? Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like what, like, I question what were they thinking in a way? It's like, did you guys do your research? Like, I don't know, your crypto.com, like, you should have seen that this art was a little bit, you know, uh, not up to par. Exactly. Yeah, they said <laughs> Open Sea has a bunch of Lamborghinis, so let's go play yeah. out some Hondas. <laughs> Dude. It's like, but yeah. I don't know if they did their like I would think they did their research, right? Like I just question why they came out with projects like that and continue to come out with like low quality projects and it's just like are they not taking NFT seriously? Do they really not know what's going on in the space? Like whoever is consult? leading whoever's leading their department should be replaced. Now you guys said it's ran off of Kronos, right? Right. So, yeah. Okay, for me, I don't really know what that that means. Can somebody like give me a quick breakdown? Like, is that Ethereum based still, or are you using a different token? Or you know, I believe it's a token. I think its backbone is Ethereum, but I believe it is a you know, which is a coin. I think the token. I think it is a token on the Ethereum network. That's called okay. Pro. Okay. That's oh. what, yeah, CRO, right? Yeah. Yeah, CRO. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I mean, Christine, you you've been the. Uh, You've been the uh, crypto.com ambassador on here. I'm looking at <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, so it's backed by their own like token and stuff. I'm just, I was looking for, <laughs> I was trying to search Twitter for like all their artwork so I could put it up on the nest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grand Bazaar, you said something I wanted to touch on is you said you don't think ever people will adopt getting a wallet through MetaMask and le learning that process. You don't think that'll ever be widely adopted. And think i agree with you i just wanted to hear you expound on that that because that, that was a pretty definitive statement you don't think that'll ever happen yeah i just think it's you know uh people are inherently pretty lazy and figuring that process out you have to be so motivated and i think um yep, you know for I me agree. like the motivation behind me getting into nfs is like i don't know i i think i just fit the uh, prototypical NFT person, and I, I don't think there's many of us out there. Like, if you if you talk to other people, even if you explain to them NFTs, tell them about like, oh, how much you, you even try and go into the money because that's like that seems to be the only thing that connects with some people. It's just I don't know. It's hard to get them to yeah. become motivated enough to learn because it's such a grueling process. Like, get a wallet, learn how to get your money from an exchange, make sure you take that money from your exchange and transfer it to the correct address. <laughs> Otherwise, you lose all your money. It's like the risk of doing it all is discouraging. The process is discouraging. Learning about all of it's really confusing. And I just don't ever see the larger, uh, you know. And you can population. only purchase $400 worth of Ethereum a week, which is so frustrating because I'm like, dude, now I got to sit here, buy on Coinbase, get the Coinbase fee, then transfer, take that transfer fee. So if I transfer over $2,000, by the time it gets to my MetaMask wallet, I'm like 1800 it's like, dude, you know, I just lost two hundred dollars yeah, trying to terrible. just get my Ethereum into my wallet. Yeah, that, that that's real discouraging. And you're right, for the masses, unless you're really motivated, we probably need a better way. And unfortunately, that probably is a centralized way. We're so used to signing up to a website by clicking on, you know, sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook. It may take something like that to actually get people on board on this. Jeremy, you got your hand up. What's up? Hey, Trader. Hey, uh, Christine. I appreciate you guys holding the space. This is awesome. It's great to hear the uh, the, 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 the debate, so to speak. Uh, I'm still fairly new to the uh, NFT side of the space. Uh, so I just want to add my two cents, um, if that's all right. I got uh, I got looking around OpenSea, you know, did I got a couple of giveaways that were given to me and uh, they were on the open market. So I, you know, I started looking into it and I was like, all right, you know, this is, this is what NFTs are, right? And, uh, you know, so I just started doing some research and figuring out, you know, you guys are talking about the gas fees and whatnot. And, you know, for me, I don't have a lot of money, right? So the gas fee in itself is like, all right, why am I going to pay that much for, you know, to have something less? So it's like, for me, I'm trying to find value in the dollar, right? And uh, so just digging and, and trying to research and uh, dive down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Uh, you know, I found the Kronos chain, which I heard you guys talk about and, you know, like I said, for me, it's like money is a is a value. So it's like I have to budget, you know, and finding uh, cheaper projects, I think is, is uh, I think it's beneficial for a lot of people that don't have the money, like, you know, people that go to OpenSea and buy these, you know, 
amazing art pieces and the uh you know the gas is is a lot you know for a lot of people so you know finding the chronos chain i mean you're literally paying less dollar for a gas fee so it's like that's understandable i mean and i could see where the get work with the the target market that they're trying to get to because there's a lot of people out there like myself you know so you know i'm just yep. trying to make it in, and uh and get into the space before i get left you know so to speak so i just want to say that you know, I think there's a lot of people just like you, Jeremy, that, that start out and you're like, look, I'm not putting in, you know, $10,000 to start with. Um, whenever I started in blockchain, uh, and granted, I started with Bitcoin and things like that, just really small. But I eventually came over to a smaller chain like uh, the Binance chain, and I started doing well in that. And so that is much less, you know, gas fees and things like that. And it allowed me to kind of cut my teeth and kind of learn the process a little bit. And then as you kind of learn a little bit through that and you you make some funds through that then you can convert to ethereum so i guess is what i'm saying is there's other chains and you just mentioned chronos where you could kind of cut your teeth learn a little bit get your education even have some success and if you have enough success then all of a sudden you find that you you do have the ten thousand dollars or the 20 you know whatever you think you need to be able to jump into ethereum which maybe that's thought of as like the the big boy chain because now maybe you want to move more major amounts of money around and then the gas doesn't seem so much in comparison to how much money you're moving around. So, yeah, I think yeah, that's a good exactly. point. No, Other, that's you, awesome, man. Thank you. And I, I was actually know, doing the oh. – I was going to say on that uh, trader was that, uh, you know, there's a market for Lamborghinis, you know, and it's like people, they want those Lamborghinis, right? And it's like the people that can't get those Lamborghinis, they're, they're like, man, I want a Lamborghini. I want something cool. I want to at least drive, you know, like I want to, <laughs> I want to experience You got to start with a Honda like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you guys say with the Hondas, you know, reference to the Lamborghinis. This is exactly right. It's like there's a market there. So it's like, you know, I mean, we're all in the same space. So it's like we got to support, you know, everybody. It's like we all want to make it, right? So it's like, I mean, to knock to knock the Cronus chain or, or to put someone down for like, oh, you're on that chain. You know, it's like, you know, everyone started somewhere, right? It's like we all want to make it to be financially able to do the things that we want to do, right? So it's like, yeah. You know, we got to pick each other up and support each other and, and, and try to spread the knowledge of like, you know, hey, this is what we're trying to get to. We got to we got to just love people. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Mr. G, you uh, we're about to add into that. What's up? Hey, what's up? Lovely people. I'm enjoying a lot the, the talk here. And uh, someone was talking about um, at the mask and um, the dif difficulty and that the people are lazy. And yes, I I. I agree with you, and uh, I also want to add that it's not only that. It's also what I realized and what I, I was also feeling when I start. Like I'm just a starter also <laughs> one month ago, and what I was also feeling, and I made a lot of mistakes. I was scammed. I, I don't, yeah, that's my <laughs> my mistake. I gave my my word seed, and then I lost everything. I didn't lose the motivation, but not only that, also the phishing, also the scams through Discord, to DM, and uh, there are there are a lot of uh, simple mistakes that um, people that are initiating can can do, and that is I guess is also what he, what is missing is about it's somewhere that someone can hold that information that that you cannot make simple mistakes where you can lose money or eventually lose your NFTs and then of course. Uh, getting out and lose the motivation of the of a, a great a great thing that the NFTs are the great world. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, making mistakes like that they're costly, and you just hope you never make the mistake twice. But you know, we've had people come on here that have, have been in the space for a while that have still clicked on something maybe they shouldn't, and uh, you know, there, there's always more education to be had. Good morning, everyone. What up, Hello, Scoop? I'm trying to trying to be super positive after some BS this morning. And what's with, up, uh, Scoop? Hey, okay. what's up, Hawk? How you doing, bro? Good, man. Good. I love hearing your voice. You know it, dude. You're like know, my neighbor, but I, I still love hearing your voice. I like said that about voice even better. Defy. We're not too far away from each other, Scoop, and we I don't get to see enough, man. Hey, uh, I'm actually going to be down in the uh, San Clemente area tomorrow if you want to want to hit up a little bit. I gotta, I'm got i going to be down at Camp Panel 10, um, and then after that, going to meet up with a partner, and I have a, a dinner meeting later if you want to get together at some point, or I'll just... Come no, I was just saying that over spaces. I don't really want to see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hit me up, man. You're, up. You're, still, you're, still, you're still bitter about my meetup with Christine, huh? <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. You didn't invite me, man. That was that hurt my heart. So. Oh, I know. I know. I'm so sorry, bud. You're off doing big things anyways. Uh, but I just want to say good morning to everybody. Trying to get some energy going from fighting off this COVID. 
I, I'm a little bit late, so I see uh, Grand Bazaar is here. Are you? Is it Butter Toast? Are you the Butter Toast dude? Or are you? That's him. Yeah. yeah. What's I, up, uh, buddy? What's up, Scroop? How you doing, hey. man? I have to use Grand Bazaar because my Twitter space is for buttered is broken. Yeah, oh, Grand Bazaar, we have heard. He, he came on here and he's like, I'm buttered toast. Uh, maybe you don't know me. Maybe you do. <laughs> it's groups all over it. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we go back to like the old GM DJ days and even before that. So uh, when I saw him, I was like, all right, is it someone running the account or is it actually buttered? And it's him. So love seeing that you're here, dude. Thanks yeah. for the love, man. I, I saw you hop up. I got excited. <laughs> sorry you're uh you're dealing with the with the vid yeah. it's not like you have the cough anymore though you sound better bro that's because i'm on my third cup of tea maybe that's why i'm so wired you <laughs> are man it sounds like you snorted something and got, <laughs> he oh. gets me fucking wired wired yeah wag me right that's what this is wag me exactly dude i've been trying to like drink uh matcha or tea more than coffee because i heard the caffeine's a little bit more uh natural they yes. still have you wired <laughs> still have you wired for sure. Yeah, definitely still have you wired. It's, so it's I had a question. Uh, what does everyone think about these? Uh, and I know they're kind of uh, everyone's downplaying them. I know it's kind of kind of stupid on the jump in the space pretty quickly. But the full send uh, meta card. I uh, I heard the other day that supposedly got some alpha. I'm not fully sure about it. Um, let me read this to you guys. Can you guys hear me? Yep, here you okay, clear. So I'm, I'm bouncing to my text messages. Um, and I don't know if anyone else has heard anything about this, but kind of interesting. This is a uh, copy pasted message in my text. So he's like, just got off a call with full send team, aka Nelk Boys, minted for 0.75 floor, now at 1.08, doing a bunch of events like Kentucky Derby pop up, stuff with Groot Hospital in Miami, UFC events, etc. Eventually, bits of equity and happy dad seltzers. And holders get whitelisted collabs with other huge projects. First one is a collab with Alien Friends in two weeks, and it will flip. Aliens are two ETH currently, and collab mint price will be 0.1 ETH. Um, expensive to buy secondhand right now, but will bring lots of value. Gary V, Dana White, Justin Bieber, FaZe Clan. And that's kind of the thing I got. I don't know what everyone kind of thinks about, thinks about I, that. I had heard the similar message Um but I had also, there was a little bit of negativity behind it on my end. So for me personally, I did because I was in the Alien Friends community and they were talking about it also, the collab coming. For me personally, if I wanted to make a um, a play at what they're doing, the Nelk Boys, I would buy into Alien Friends and then see how that collab goes. I just... Um, like the Alien Friends uh, full set collab? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the most I would touch the full send. Just me personally. And I know uh, Hawk might be on the same notion with me on this because we both come from the sales world. If I get a message like that that has a bunch of fluff in it and magic words, I immediately just go, uh, yep. no. yeah. Yeah, that's why I was asking you guys. Like, I don't know. It sounds kind of... Usually, I mean, I for like me, stuff... it would flip. Like, if anything, if for you sure. think, you know, it'll be a, a quick 100. flip, grab my cash in. But I don't know exactly. if it'd be a long hold for me. Yeah, I mean, I bought three of them at Mint. I sold both, two of them at one point ten. I'm holding on the one, like, just for the hell of it. But, I mean, oh, well, if you covered your cost, then you're good. I'd write it out. As long as you cover your cost. But buying in right <laughs> now for, like, somebody who's just looking oh, to no. get into a project, I would tell them would be not, I would never steer anyone towards yeah. this for a first project. Hell no. Yeah. yeah, throw that in your hidden folder and forget about it. For yeah, no, I mean, I've been I've been trading for like six months now, so it's like it was just another project came across my radar. I had to eat for it. I was like, you know, hey, that's a good you know. flip though. Shoot, good little three ETH you're sitting on right there. Yeah, yeah, not bad. And that's what it's all about is we want to make flips. And even if it does, even if the fluff, like I always was told, is buy on the rumor, sell on the fact. And if the rumor gets out of the of that, then okay, it might drive the price up. Just like with crypto skulls, the whole thing with Gary V, it ran up, it ran up, it ran up. And I probably could have, I should have sold at the five ETH peak. I know I fucked up. Yeah, I, I held my- and I ended up selling at like three point eight or something like that, which is still a good grab because I grabbed it at one ETH. So you know that that's just Greg, get your money. And Did keep you grab moving. three? I know you're always a, a grab three guy. Uh, that one I didn't because I was so I was hesitant. You guys could you guys could see this group. I was like, do I buy this? <laughs> guys, do I buy this? And they're dang. like, I don't know. And I was like, Bro, no, I was I'm looking at these things it. at like 0. 0.5 and I bought one and it goes up to four point five. Still, still haven't fucking sold it because very <laughs> I was a fucking nervous guy with this thing. <laughs> same, same. And, but I was uh, like, dude, the come big, down was big rule of three guy. Big rule of yeah. three guy. 
Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's how that. I am too. You I was able to grab two of those and uh, flip one of them to take my money out plus some profit. So that was that was nice. But dang, dude, you got three. That's that's an awesome flip. I feel like that's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. I was I was literally sitting in the space with Gary. I was like, oh, and then he bought the one for a hundred ETH, and it was running up. But once it hit that five ETH cap, I was like, oh, we're coming down. We're coming down. Like you know, I already knew it was, that somebody had <laughs> bought one at five ETH and then listed it for three, and it just caused that whole panic in the market. And whoever it was, that was such a super hater on the project, you know. But that's the sad part is it just takes that. It just takes one person to be like, I'm gonna stop your run. And go ahead and cause a little panic in your in your whole community. What do you think their motivation is for that? I don't get it. It, it ultimately cost them two ETH to do so. But they just want to screw the project over that bad. You know what's crazy? Okay, I looked into it, and it was the Digimental, the supposedly the owner of Hate Beast's profile that bought that that one at four point eight ETH. And he relisted it at three ETH ten minutes wow. later. Dude, wow! That's whack, bro. Wow! Wow! See if you can do the if you if you can do the uh, forensics to find out who owns something. Yeah, there is uh, there is some alpha in there. Yeah, so I was like, you know, that was nuts. It, it was nuts because I I was it, I was tripping out. I was sending screenshots to Scroop and Christine and Crypt, and I was like, yo, what the heck is this? This is the account that we were looking into before the hate beast drop, and he literally bought it relisted it 10 minutes later for way below the floor caused the panic and i thought okay maybe he's trying to cause the panic so he could sweep the floor but nope it just that was it like he literally just wanted to stop that run wow that's crazy like w w why would he do that is he trying to prevent like a siphoning of all the eth before the hape drop but like i don't understand that because you could only mint one hape each person i don't know i just i don't get what why he yeah would do that. it's kind of uh people maybe do that Huh? He hates Gary V. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, Gary got a lot of hate. If you guys notice, he has not tweeted out about any NFTs other than his own project since that day. He got so much hate on Twitter from that, um, from him, quote unquote, pumping skulls, but which is something he said in the, in the disc. He's like, I really just believe in this and I invest in stuff that I believe in. And that's what, I, you know, that's who he is and that's what he does. But he got so much hate from from just pumping those skulls that's like us. that. Yeah, it sucks that he has to get hate. Like pe big people in the space have to get hate like that, you know, because you know, yeah, you people were posting on Twitter. They're like, project. I mean, sorry, he, you know, you didn't get in or lost money on it. Like that's not his fucking job to worry about you. Yeah, exactly. It's just like people get so. It's just that's funny to me. Mm -hmm. It is funny, and it's just ridiculous because people like Gary Vee are so helpful for, for yeah, the space. Dude, like he's pumping like, all of our reason, bags. If the people are here, is like almost Gary Vee feels like you know, like yeah. this guy's never been wrong about anything. <laughs> yeah, seriously, and like, dude, what I said is... all the way down to since the '90s when he's doing the wine shit. Like, dude, the guy's been right about everything up to this point. Like, you can't yeah. hate on the guy and like be pissed that you lost some money. I don't know. Yeah, that's how people are. And I also said too, I was like, if they were pumping the project that they're in, they'd be all for it. Yeah, one hundred percent. So that is that's just how it goes. And if you guys see that in a market where you guys are taking a fast run up, same thing would happen with Alien Friends. Um, and it was funny because the the wallet that did the same thing, Alien Friends were running up to like four ETH, four point four, four point five. I was I was super excited that night because I had bought one for a point nine ETH right before that run up, and it ran all the way up to four point four. And somebody did the same thing. They bought one at four ETH and listed it at two, and just brought the whole market down. So I don't know why people do that. I, I really still trying to figure it out. And that one wasn't for a sweeping the floor because what you had suggested earlier is what I would think happened, even though you mm -hmm. said it is they bring it down and then just start buying up whenever the market goes down. Yeah. And then that was, but the, the wallet crazy part too was it was before he's and friends were, were really like close quote unquote, how they say they are now, but that wallet was holding, I think it was like 18 Mori's. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I guess it gets into competition, right? If, if pizza hut could screw over Domino's or Domino's could screw over, you know, Papa John's or whatever. And, bring down their price they're gonna do that yeah they're gonna do that right they're so this is do gonna that. do the wild wild west that is web three and to me if there's an advantage that they can have and you're like all i have to do is buy this for five ETH and then sell it for three and everybody watch everybody panic and watch the world burn then I, it's crazy because like that guy obviously didn't give a shit about profiting at all he's just like i, I care yeah about he had to throw stuff. away throw yeah, away literally. It's just like funny like some people oh, dude some people have too much money and they just don't give a shit to him, it was worth it to no, stop sure. Gary V. And look at Gary V. Hasn't like he got a bunch of hate, and he hasn't tweeted about other projects. He's probably hesitant now. And yeah, um, he tweeted he out. He said, "I will be focusing on V friends from here on." 
How sad. No. Yeah. Dude, that's like Banks. Like Banks, I forgot someone bitched him out too. And yeah, because he, he did like, the he whole like, thing. He got sad. Hastings. He was like, I'm done. I'm done telling you guys and helping you guys. And now he's helping out again. But like, dude, it's like same scenario. Like these guys get hate for trying to help people out and then they shit on you. Um, speaking of food, before we, I know we only have a few minutes left. What do you guys think about Elon um, tweeting McDonald's that if um, Tess, if McDonald's takes Dogecoin, that he's going to eat a Happy Meal, like you know, Solid. and he'll record himself um, eating a Happy Meal. I feel like it was a missed opportunity for McDonald's. Um, it totally was. <laughs> yeah, he said only if Tesla accepts Grimace coin. I was like, fire your social media person right now. Oh, my girlfriend said that actually Burger King responded to him on yeah. that post. They said only a king knows what to do. Oh my god, that'd be <laughs> hilarious. And I tweeted back at McDonald's, like, are you serious? Because it took them, like, 12 hours to respond or something. And that's what they responded with. And so then I had I, plenty of time to think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was real. like, redeem yourself right now or Burger King takes the cake. Like, it's up to you. And that's the crazy part. Elon Musk can tweet out something and just completely blow up. Like, all I had to do was, like, okay, we'll do it for 24 hours. Or something like that, you know? Like, it, it's yeah. not like it would, it would hurt them. You know, right. it would probably bring a ton of money. Yeah. And it, that, you know, twenty four hours. What a promo that could have been! Because they could have said, "Logistics be damned. I don't care. We'll, we'll figure it out." <laughs> and, but I think I think fucking Wendy's should get on that. I could see them like doing some really awesome play on words with with their name. Oh, yeah, that is so true. I'm surprised Wendy's social media person because they're the most ruthless genius of yeah, social media, person. and they didn't respond to that McDonald's tweet. I don't know if they. Just didn't know about it yet, but I'm sure the Wendy's social media person is going to be on that. But Burger King was fast. They were like, only the king knows what to do with that coin. And then freaking McDonald's says, oh, almost like accepts Grimace coin. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So what is Grimace know? coin? This, it's, a, it's, it's fake, but now it's real. I was about to say, I'm sure it's real now, but it's I think it's real now. Screwing around. So, you know how earlier I said, uh, you know, some people would use decentralized messaging just because you can because it's novel. If Wendy's took Doge, would you guys go and eat a meal at Wendy's just just to say you did it, just to do yes. it? For yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I don't know, because then yeah. I'll be the guy who said I spent 20, 20 Doge coins on my meal, and then ten years from <laughs> now it's, it's worth. <laughs> That's what happened yeah, to Bitcoin. Hilarious. Remember, people yeah, were the buying Bitcoin pizza. pizza, and they're yep. so mad that they used <laughs> their Bitcoin for pizza. You know yeah, what? There would be a lot of people in that line behind you. I'm sure that would get their meals paid for in Doge too. Oh, bad. definitely. Yeah, so there's yeah. there's people in the early early Bitcoin days who were using it to uh, purchase drugs off of the Silk Road, and I actually know a person that was doing that. And I like to make fun of them, you know. I'm like, man, you snorted a lot. <laughs> 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 the bro, it's dollars. funny. I was like, ten, bro, I had to be like nine years old, eight years old. Do you remember that Habo game? Yep. I know they had their NFT. There's like yep. a game. And I remember there was like, I think you could use Bitcoin or something. I went to the gas station and bought the big, the Bitcoin prepaid card. I was too back. young to know what the fuck it was, so I never got it. I, I think that's hilarious because I was staring right at Bitcoin in my face as like an eight-year-old. Didn't even know. <laughs> well, well, Sarah, our uh, CEO, CTO, he was a professional gamer for a long time, and he would get paid in Bitcoin. So he had like 150 Bitcoin you know, Dude, back in the early nuts. 2000s. Uh, he obviously sold a little bit early, bought a house from it, but, you know, today that would be just insane hey that's a good win i'll take yeah. it you know you never know what these things are gonna do that's the crazy part yeah. you know i thought you were I... just gonna say he bought a bunch of pizza <laughs> <laughs> i always wanted to know what the transaction fee were. you know we always talk about gas on here uh even back then there was some transaction fee for that pizza purchase it was 50 cents i remember when i had got the the bitcoin prepaid card and i was buying stuff there was like 50 cents fee. 50 cents then but what yeah, then the day's what you know however many bitcoin however many sats it was i'd like to know to know what was the what was the gas fee then whenever you know it would be so crazy now i would think of the the amount well anyway always good to talk about the different things that we covered a lot today y'all we talked about messaging and we ended up with wendy's and now we're buying our uh our baconators and our son of baconators uh, up at wendy's with doge so yeah that's um, i look forward to that uh, make it happen Wendy. hey i just i just tweeted at elon and wendy's <laughs> I'm gonna make Dude, that. I'm gonna go on that. I'm just gonna retweet that. Okay, go retweet that. It's okay, I will. I'm gonna find it and retweet it. I'll, I'll, I'll it. What's everyone think about uh, Fishy Fam? I am gonna grab as many as yeah. I can. That's what I'm thinking. It's yeah, gonna I'm be. Good. Good. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah, it seems to be. It's getting a lot of chatter for sure. Um, 
All right, guys. Well, we are to the end of our alpha hour here. Tomorrow, we're going to do a little something different. Here with Traderverse, we've been meeting here in spaces Monday through Wednesday. We're going to start doing all of our spaces uh, all of Monday through Friday. So I will be here tomorrow at 1730 UTC, 23 hours from now, same time as we did today. And we'll talk a little bit tomorrow, a little more Traderverse-centric on Thursday. So if you're wondering what the Traderverse platform will be, what it's about and what it might be able, how it might be able to integrate into what you do day to day. Tomorrow's the day to tune in for that. And then Friday, we should have an AMA on here as well with an upcoming NFT project. So maybe you can get some alpha there. Until then, I am at Voice of DeFi. You can find me on Twitter. And thank you for Christine for coming up here and uh, just helping lead the conversation as well. Make sure you give her a follow if you haven't already. Until next time, I love you all. Peace. See you later, man. Peace. Have a good day. See you and it was worth it to no, stop Gary sure. V and look at Gary V hasn't like he got a bunch of hate and he hasn't tweeted about other projects he's probably he and he hasn't tweeted about other projects he's probably hesitant now and yeah um, he tweeted he out he said I will be focusing on V friends from here on how sad no. yeah. yeah dude that's like banks like banks I forgot someone bitched him out too and yeah because he, he did like, the he whole like, thing he got on sad. Hasty. he was like I'm done I'm done telling you guys and helping you guys and now he's helping out again but like dude it's like same scenario, like these guys get hate for trying to help people out and then they shit on you. Um, speaking of food, before we, I know we only have a few minutes left. What do you guys think about Elon um, tweeting McDonald's that if, um, Tess, if McDonald's takes Dogecoin, that he's going to eat a Happy Meal, like, you know, <laughs> and he'll that. record himself um, eating a Happy Meal? I feel like it was a missed opportunity for McDonald's. Um, <laughs> it totally was. <laughs> yeah. He said only if Tesla accepts Grinness coin. I was like, fire your social media person right now. Oh, my girlfriend said that actually Burger King responded to him on yeah. that post. They said only a king knows what to do. Oh, my God. That'd be <laughs> hilarious. And I tweeted back at McDonald's like, are you serious? Because it took him like 12 hours to respond or something. And that's what they responded with. And so then I had I, time to think. Yeah. yeah I was real. like, redeem yourself right now or Burger King takes the cake. Like, it's up to you. And that's the crazy part. Elon Musk can tweet out something and just completely blow up. Like all I had to do was like, okay, we'll do it for 24 hours or something like that. You know, like it, it's yeah. not like it would, it would hurt them. You know, right. it would probably bring a ton of money yeah. and it, that, you know, 24 hours. What a pro that could have been. Cause they could have said logistics be damned. I don't care. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and, but I think, I think fucking Wendy's should get on that. I could see them like doing some really awesome play on words with with their name oh, yeah that is so true i'm surprised wendy's social media person because they're the most ruthless genius of yeah, social they media and they didn't respond to that mcdonald's tweet i don't know if they just didn't know about it yet but i'm sure the wendy's social media person is gonna be on that but burger king was fast they were like only the king knows what to do with that coin and then freaking mcdonald's says oh almost like except grimace coin that was the dumbest thing i've ever seen so what's Grimace you know, coin? It's a, it's, it's fake, but now it's real. I was about to say I'm sure it's real now, but it's I think real it's real now. Screwing around. So you know how earlier I said, uh, you know, some people would use decentralized messaging just because you can, because it's novel. If Wendy's took Doge, would you guys go and eat a meal at Wendy's just just to say you did it, just to do yes. it? For yeah, sure, one hundred percent. <laughs> Same I don't know, then yes. I'll be the guy who said I spent 20, 20 Doge coins on my meal, and then ten years from <laughs> now it's worth. <laughs> That's what happened yeah, to Bitcoin. Hilarious. Remember, people yeah, were the buying Bitcoin pizza. Um, pizza, and they're yep. so mad that they used <laughs> their Bitcoin for pizza. You know yeah, what? There would be a lot of people in that line behind you. I'm sure that would get their meals paid for in Doge too. Oh, oh definitely. Bad. Yeah, so there's yeah. there's people in the early early Bitcoin days who were using it to uh, purchase drugs off of the Silk Road and. I actually know a person that was doing that. And I like to make fun of them. You know, I'm like, man, you snorted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the bro, it's dollars. funny. I was like, bro, I had to be like nine years old, eight years old. Do you remember that Habo game? Yep. I know they had their NFT. There's like yep. a game. And I remember there was like, I think you could use Bitcoin or something. I went to the gas station and bought the bi the Bitcoin prepaid card. I was too back. young to know what the fuck it was. So I never got it. I, I think that's hilarious because I was staring right at Bitcoin in my face. as was like an eight-year-old. Didn't even know. <laughs> well, well, Sarah, our uh, CEO, CTO, he was a professional gamer for a long time. And he would get paid in Bitcoin. So he had like 150 Bitcoin you know, Dude, back in the early nuts. 2000s. Uh, he obviously sold a little bit early, bought a house from it, but you know today that would be just insane hey that's a good win i'll take yeah. it you know you never know what these things are going to do that's the crazy part you know i thought you were just going to say he bought a bunch of pizza 
<laughs> I've always wanted to know what the transaction fee were. You know, we always talk about gas on here. Uh, even back then, there was some transaction fee for that pizza purchase. It was 50 cents. I remember when I had got the, the Bitcoin prepaid card and I was buying stuff, there was like 50 cents. 50 fee. cents then. But what's yeah, then. the days? What, you know, however many Bitcoin, however many sats it was, I'd like to know to know what was the what was the gas fee then whenever, you know, it would be so crazy now, I would think of the, the amount. Well, anyway, always good to talk about the different things that we covered a lot today. Y'all, we talked about messaging and we ended up with Wendy's and now we're buying our uh, our Baconators and our son of Baconators uh, up at Wendy's with Doge. So, yeah, that's um, I look forward to that. Uh, make it happen. Wendy. Hey, I just I just tweeted at Elon and Wendy's. <laughs> I'm gonna make Dude, that. I need to go on I'm gonna retweet that. Okay, go retweet that. It's okay, I will. I'm gonna find it and retweet it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> everyone think about uh, fishy fam. I am gonna grab as many as yeah. I can. That's what I'm. It's yeah, gonna I'm be. Good. Good. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah, it seems to be. It's getting a lot of chatter for sure. Um, all right, guys. Well, we are to the end of our alpha hour here. Tomorrow, we're going to do a little something different. Here with Traderverse, we've been meeting here in spaces Monday through Wednesday. We're going to start doing all of our spaces, uh, all of Monday through Friday. So I will be here tomorrow at 1730 UTC, 23 hours from now, same time as we did today. And we'll talk a little bit tomorrow, a little more Traderverse-centric on Thursday. So if you're wondering what the Traderverse platform will be, what it's about, and what it might be able, how it might be able to integrate into what you do day to day, Tomorrow's the day to tune in for that. And then Friday, we should have an AMA on here as well with an upcoming NFT project. So maybe you can get some alpha there. Until then, I am at Voice of DeFi. You can find me on Twitter. And thank you for Christine for coming up here and uh, just helping lead the conversation as well. Make sure you give her a follow if you haven't already. Until next time, I love you all. Peace. See you later, man. Peace. Have a good day. See you guys.